Here, where the Blackwater River meets the Boyne, a busy town has sprung up, drawing its strength from the two rivers, with many industries, one of the most prosperous towns in the whole of County Mead. Busy streets of Norton lead us northwards to Dunnock Moor, where, close by the barn, the ancient round tower rises, one of the finest of its kind in Ireland, with its celebrated sculptured doorway, the stone showing the crucifixion. This tower was built, they say, so that the monks could look for the approach of the marauding Danes up the barn itself. And a short distance on, a boarding leads down from the high road, down towards the barn, to the weir at Dunno. Here we look out over the rich pastures of Royal Mead, the ancient patrimony of the Irish kings, the lands coveted by the Anglo-Normans and by all who came after them. The old Boreen brings you right down below the crumbling walls of Dunmore Castle, set proudly as any Rhine castle above the placid waters of the Boyne, where you can look right back towards Dunmore and see the river foaming down below you across the weir. Dunmore, once a stronghold of the Darcys, was burnt, they say, in 1798, but the Boyne flows placidly on beneath it and leads us on towards the Bridge of Boyne itself at Stack Allen. Here, where the river flows calmly, we have an Anoiga hostel, reminding us that just below Stack Allen, you could start the famous Boyne walk along the old towpath of the disused canal. Here at the weir, fishermen are often busy, but we saw only one, a far older fisherman, a heron, plying his trade by the river bank. Coming back from Stack Allen, we make our way into Slane, passing the imposing gates of Slane Castle, where, among the ancient stones, House Martins now nest. A grassy path close to the Boyne Banks gives us a view across to the fairy tale turrets of Slane Castle itself. This, of course, is a more modern building erected on the site of an ancient castle close above the Boyne. And then we come down to Slane Bridge, recalling that here so often the poet Francis Ledworth, the, bla the blackbird of the Boyne, must have stood and watched the water creaming and foaming across the weir 
and the swans gliding slowly downstream towards the sea. High above Slane rises the famous hill of Slane, where St. Patrick lit the Paschal fire, and long ages afterwards, the Anglo-Normans established a monastery, and later still, the Franciscans came here, and among the ruins, you can see sculptured stones of almost every age. Down below the Jackdaw haunted ruins of Slane, a cross recalls the Meath men and Wicklow men who perished here after 1798 on their unlucky expedition into the plains of Meath. And then on we go towards Newgrange, the great mound rising proudly now above the surrounding fields. Newgrange, one of our most famous ancient monuments, dating back to at least 2000 BC, is now being extensively reconditioned. The trees have been cleared from its summit and the capping of white quartz stones revealed again after how many centuries. And there, on the threshold of Brunebein, is the great sculptured threshold stone. And now the earth has been cleared away so that you can see once again, after how many centuries, the whole ring of the great curb stones some of them richly carved with designs that have not seen the light of day for who knows how many generations. The great circle of standing stones around the monument is being reconditioned so that at last, in a worthy manner, one of our greatest prehistoric monuments is being preserved. 